After you've been programming in PHP for a while, you'll have a number of functions that you've built up and want to keep them in a library file somewhere so that you can access them from every file. So here I have some example functions. Get dividing line. That makes a little line here. I can show you. Like this. Get nice header. Waiting for Godot. Makes a nice little header like that with a box. We have get space out text. Actually, we could do it here. Space out text. So it spaces out text like that. And get current date and time. Echo get current date and time. So. Here we have an example of the functions that we want to now put into a library so that we can access them from every page. Because the problem is, if we have another page here, PHP file, let's say you're on your report or something like that, and you want to use those files or those functions, you can't access them here. That's the problem. So how are we going to do that? Let me show you how I do that in projects that I do. I make a folder called QTools for quick tools. You can call it library or whatever you want. Inside that, I make PHP files. I'm going to call mine, for instance, QPRE for presentation functions. That would be dividing line and nice header. I'm going to make another called qstr php for string functions for instance space out text that should be a file let me change that to a file here okay and another one called q dat for date functions for instance current date and time now i'm going to move these into their respective files. For instance, those two are presentation functions. So in here, I'll make a class QPRE and load them in here like that. Public static function means that they are public in the class and static just means that they return a value. That's how you set up a library of functions with public static. Let me get the other ones, space out text. We'll put that in str, class str, qstr for quick strings. Load them in here or load this one in here, public static. And the last one, get current date. Here we go. Oh, we need to make a class here. Class Q D A T for date. So public static. So now we have all of our helper functions where they should be. Current date and time. Get current date and time is in quick date functions. Space out text is in quick string functions. And get dividing line and get nice header are in presentation functions. Our main file here is empty. In fact, that is not a good example. We'll just delete this file and say we're working on some file in our application. We'll call it report. So now we have to include these files somehow. At this point, you have four choices. You can use include. You can use require. You can use include once. Or you can use require once. Use require once. I'll explain to you why later. Let's require these. QTools. QPRE. PHP. So we loaded that one in. Let's load the other two in. QString and QDate. Now Eclipse works well with require files. As we can see here, I want to make a nice header. So I say echo Q P R control space and I get the two colons control space again. And I get both 
functions that are in my presentation library. I choose get nice header and say waiting for Godot to let's look at this object not found. Of course, because it's the wrong file. Let's look at report. And we see that it can use the included function, no problem, just by us telling it where it is here. But if you think about it, after a while, you're going to have not three of these, but maybe 10, one for math, one for various other types of functions that you have. And you don't want to have to include 10 files in every file that you create. So what I'm going to do is take all of these, create a new file in QTools and call it include all. That way, in report, we just have to say require once, QTools, include all. Let's see if this is, shows here, and it does. The advantage of this now is that any page that we make, let's make a new page, let's call it, for instance, products. We simply have to put in one line at the beginning to include all of our files that are nice and organized into different library files. And we immediately can, for instance, display the date by saying echo Q D A T control space, control space again, and it pops in the only function that is in that file. Let's look at products. And it works. So there you see a very structured, very easy way to organize the functions that you collect as you develop in PHP. It enables you to include only one line at the top of any file and have access to everything that you have in your library. There is another option here that you want to know about in your include all file. You can set an include path like this in the set include path and then say QTools. And then you don't have to include those here. The advantage of that, let's take a look, make sure that still works. Yes, the advantage of that is you can now switch out here, perhaps if you have various versions, uh, very quickly just by changing this value here. Since then, PHP would look in a different directory, for instance, if you have QTools 2 or QTools 3, for instance, you could very easily swap between versions. I said earlier that I would explain the difference between require once and include once. Basically, it has to do with if the file that you're including does not exist, what happens? Here you see require once gives you a fatal error. That means PHP is going to stop. And if you're using requires for libraries, that's pretty much what you want to happen. I mean, if you don't have your library, then you don't want to continue going on in your code. You want the code to stop and your library should always be there. However, if you want to handle it by yourself, you can do that by using include once. So here we see it included it fine. And if we put something else in there, we get warnings, which the include once gave us. Now, let me show you how you can actually handle that. You can say, if include once, then everything is okay and don't do anything, just go on basically. But if you were not able to include that file, then you can say something intelligent instead of an error. For instance, library is not available. And then you can stop by saying die. Let's try that. So library is not available. If you don't want all of these warnings, you can suppress them actually by doing this. Init set display errors also. And there you have 
a very nice message for your user if your library isn't available. And that's only possible with using include. And if your library is available, then it simply goes on and executes your code. So if that's the functionality you want, then you can have this large block of code at the beginning of each file. However, your library should always be there and it makes your code more readable if you simply have one line at the beginning of every file like this, require once, it works. And if there's an error, then there is simply an error. So you have to decide how you want to handle your errors if you're going to use require once or include once. But in any case, you can see that this is a very efficient way to organize the functions and classes that you build up as you program in PHP into various files, including them in one line from each file that you create. This one line calls one file, and that file loads all of the functionality in terms of functions and classes that you need for your programming.